नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास बुद्ध धम संघ नमस्सा नमो बुद्धाय आफ्टर दिस पीसफुल मेडिटेशन सेशन आज दिस इज द राइट टाइम टू कंटेम्पलेट एंड रिफ्लेक्ट ओपन द धम when we reflect upon the dhamma that means we are developing the causes and conditions to to check our mind and to know what is going on in the mind what is happening within the mind and how we can reform our own mind that is why dhamma savana is a qualities of of developing wisdom as well as this is a quality of growing in kushala dhamma the most challenging things we confront in our life is to just to check our mind we are confronted with this thing which is very important that we constantly check our mind from negative tendencies and also we trying to develop the positive we have we foster the mind with positivities positive qualities which lead us to freedom to awakenment to liberation and that's all about the dhamma when we see the kushala dhamma and agushala dhamma what the buddha trying to summarize trying to give a give a wonderful technique that we have to let go of the akushalas and to develop the kushalas but it is doesn't simply happens like that when we say to remove the akushalas do we know we we want to leave or let go the tendencies but we still fall into that the old habits isn't it we wish to remove that akushalas from the mind but we don't know how to remove it that's why dhamma practice is necessary we think that oh i know everything we i am a i am epitome of so much of knowledge i'm storehouse of this and that uh, but we don't know how to manage our own my own mind and life then ultimately we end up in suffering all our so called knowledge and skills is of no use but if you learn the skills if you learn the dhamma that how to remove those negative causes and conditions and you know how to develop the positivities you know how to foster the qualities then then actually you are a wise person you are constantly in growing in blessings you are making the best use of your life you know in in the dimension of the dhamma you trying to make your life more meaningful more peaceful that is what the buddha teaches us now today we will be discussing about this uh, the causes to develop the kushalas and also in the negative aspects we have to let go of the kushalas how do we let go of them because unless and until we let go the akushalas the akushalas will not enter into the mind that is as simple as that our mind is totally uh, constantly contacted with the the eye impressions the the sensory world we don't have restraint over the of the senses when you come into the vihara the same thing same story you come to the vihara to to let go the akushalas but you still your mind hanker and run after your so called um worldly pleasures you don't find delights in the vihara as well you know 
If you go to the top of the mountain also you won't find it, you still carry those burden. If you go to a solitude place you find the same thing. Why? Because the causes remains there in your heart. So the first thing is the kushalas, let go the kushala or kushalas. If you see the teachings, how the Buddha teaches very skillfully and we have to establish ourselves in the wholesome habits. You have developed the, the sila dhamma. You have to establish yourself in the practice of sila. The sila is not like a sort of rules or set of rules and you do chanting every day. You do this sort of rituals, that sort of rituals and you never connect your life. Some people say that sila is beyond our life. The moment you try to differentiate and then absolutely that is, uh, you, you have not understood at all. Sila, you should be imbibed, should be connected to your own life. You should reflect upon that. Why do I have to take the sila practice? The Buddha said, sila dhamma, if you are established in sila, what happens actually? Many people, they don't know. Sila actually down the line, if you see Sila strikes at the root, Sila removes the Akusala's tendencies. You know, when you lead a disciplined life, a moral life, that means you are removing the conditions, the tendencies of Akusala's, the Akusala Dhammas. That is how the first factor is that one has to practice sila in, in his or her life. Anybody, for example. For the monks with the higher precepts, for you, the basic five or eight precepts. Hmm. And sometimes you can take the, the gahatha silas, the dasa sila, for the householders. So the first factor is to check our mind from Augustala, see the sealers. When you try to commit yourself, then you are checking your mind. The next factor is, is also helpful is your restraintment, how you have to have you have to guard, you have to be just like a guard, a sentry over the senses. You know. You have to put a control uh, over your senses. Indriya Sangara is also very important. How many of you know this word, Indriya Sangara, restraintment of our senses? Whatever we see, perceive through our ear, through our nose, through our uh, eyes, through our you know, tongue, you know, bodily contact, and through our mind doors. These are the w doors where we, we can perceive the outside things, the outside objects. And the restraintment of uh, our own sense organs, senses are very much important in the practice of sila, practice of tamma, because the augusalas will only enter through these doors. You know, the tana, the abhija, everything is there. This is Ethe Satana Upajjamana Upajjati Ethe Satana Nirujjamana Nirujjati In one of the Sutta, Buddha says, from there the Tana arises, from there, and from that sense door, we think that Tana is outside. Tana takes the root from there, and Tana will not come alone, it goes with our ignorance, our delusions. Perceiving the things wrongly, with not correct, correct understanding. So indriya samvara, indriya samvara, with any respects with your, with your dealings, with your everything, you just you just see, uh, just a seeing, just mere seeing. You hear a mere hearing. You don't try to give any level to it. How many of of us actually practice it? That is also very important. And, but for to do that, Indriya Samvara, you also need 
mindfulness. You also need sati, otherwise how is it possible? But say a person who is very new, he doesn't, doesn't know what is sati. But for him, Indriya Sambara is very helpful when we regularly practice that restraint. We don't uh, grab the things uh, or we just hold on to the objects whichever we perceive at once. But we use our clear comprehension, we use our right attitude. We neither develop greed nor develop anger. Rather we see our mind, state of mind in the mind, what is happening. So Indriya restraining, restraining over the eye door, ear door, nose, tongue, body and the mind. You know, sometimes mind also, uh, you know, cheat us, uh, plays a trick. You are sitting here but you are not listening to the Dhamma, you are planning, you are agitated, you are restless. Is it a happy mind? Is that a good state of mind? Are you observing that? As the causes for the Kusala Dhamma, is that mind bring you happiness? No, certainly no. So, the, the third aspect, so far we, we discussed very interestingly, and the third is you have to have the Matanyuta, you have to moderation in your eating and moderation in your sleeping. You want to check the akusalas, you don't want the akusalas to come, but food, your uh, attachment to, you know, mod uh, to the food, you don't have any moderation. And that, that is how we got entrapped, we got trapped in this kilesas again. And we develop the Akushala through to this, you see. So moderation in your eating, when you have a, you know the proper amount, you know what your body needs, you reflect upon that, that I am just uh, exist. Just not to live. My, my existence is not to just eat and sleep. Our existence shouldn't be like that. How, much, how many of us, we spend so much of time in preparing what we should eat in the morning breakfast, how we should eat in the lunch, and then you plan for the dinner, and then you say, oh no, this menu is not good, we should have something more, some different, different uh, types of, uh, you know, cuisines and delicacies. How much, how much you, like the Upasikas, they know, uh, of course, the men also know different. So we, we, we spend so much of time in this. And then also sleeping. We don't have any moderation in our, uh, how much we should sleep. You know, some, some, for some people they find so much happiness, they find the day and night they just want to sleep. Eat nicely, sleep nicely. This is, this is what their the motto of life is. But, but forget it, then how about Dhamma? Where is your Kushala and Akushala? Are you checking the Akusalas from the mind? The Buddha says, only a person has to sleep only one watch of the night. He divides the, the night into three watches. Actually our body needs only few hours to repair, to, to get the rest. But we give so much importance to these things and we forget about to taking care of our own mind. Forget about our practice. So these are the factors which if you actually really contemplate and reflect, it will help you to, uh, to remove the, the conditioning of our mind. You remove the akusalas, sila practice, restrainment, having control over the senses, you see. Control over your uh, object, the visual objects, control over your, the, the sound which you hear, you know. 
many people are so mad you know after for example music can be a very distracting factor saying something visible object it can be a distracting thing smell or even taste you know even the comfort and luxuries even the planning and imaginations we we these are the things you see so then what we should do in the buddha one of the sutta he says anamatagga the sansara anamatagga sutta sansara has no beginning no end but in this in this vicious and long journey of life we we happens to be born as human beings we come in we come in contact with right causes and conditions we born to a good environment and we have supporting factors we have the suitable locality you see we have good teachers around us we have a good parents those those are factors which will lead us to kushala dhammas those are the, the positive conditions positive factors so the first positivity is the first factor it could be yoni so manasikara when you when somebody reflect rightly when you uh, think about the causes the positive causes well the buddha sasana is still still present we have still a chance to practice the dhamma we have still time to perfect our sila develop our mind and grow in wisdom and so forth when we reflect like that then actually our mind becomes inclined and it is grounded upon the right understanding you know it is also a part of wisdom yoni samana sikara when somebody is ready to reform his mind then he will naturally incline towards dhamma practice you know then then the next factor comes that we should associate with the wise company we should somebody we depend upon uh the wise people we should live in vicinity to them in pali it is called sapurisa nisaya when for example you coming to the vihara you are associating with the bantis this simply means that you are uh associating with wise people whether they are lay people or laities or monks they are our kalyana mitras they are noble friends and the noble friends will show you something good something meaningful to your life they will foster your dhamma practice the wise people will not deteriorate not lead you to the wrong path if they are truly wise enough they will help you to grow in dhamma they will encourage you to practice the dana sila bhavana or vipassana like that so when we have the sasana with us we have the buddha dhamma and sangha a person should actually if he wisely contemplate he should make use of this time he will encourage to um to perform dana or practice sila or even meditate and these are the the factors of happiness these are the factors of punya cultivating goodness we think that how can how can we grow in punya just like i mentioned akusalas have conditions if you give rise the akusalas then you are going in a in a wrongful way in a negative directions similarly when you develop the conditions for the kushalas your direction shall be changed you are going in the right directions it's is your choice how you are going to give the directions so the first is to to know that what is right and what is wrong for you when the buddha sasana is still exist we have the opportunity to to grow in dhamma that is called 
right? Uh, that is called the yoniso manasikara, the wise reflections. Reflection about the sila, reflections on the samadhi and panya. Then the wise friends, as I said, the wise company are also equally important to, to help us to grow in the Dhamma because sometimes we are so heedless, we are not that mindful enough. The wise person will tell you, they will show you the correct path, you see. If you, now you give up your home, you sacrifice your home and come here, for what? To associating with the wise, to cultivating that practice, to cultivating the causes, the causes, the cause to happiness, the cause to cultivate the merits. The third factor is called Dhamma Savana, is also important because Dhamma Savana, when the bhantis or the teachers teach you, oh, these are the benefits of dana, these are the benefits of practicing sila, that's what you have to practice sila. And when you have samadhi, then you have clarity in the mind, you have wisdom in the mind, and you, um, you will be free from suffering, you see. You'll grow in blessings and in wisdom many ways. So the teachers, they teach you Dhamma in so many ways. Uh, that means it is also a factor to, to grow in wisdom, to, to cultivate that kushala Dhamma. Dhamma Savana is itself is a kushala. It's a wholesome thing. If you don't listen to the Dhamma, if you could listen to something else, there are so many things are available to, to pollute the mind. Isn't it? So many stuff outside. Why Dhamma Savana? Because Dhamma Savana brings about the understanding in the mind, brings the peace in our mind. It gives relaxation to our mind, it gives wisdom, we feel happy. And it is very practical. So that is the reason why uh, we have to listen the Dhamma. Until we are perfect. When we are perfect ones, maybe we, we, then we actualize, we experience the Dhamma in our heart. But until then we need the guidance, we need the teachings. The fourth factor similarly is very important that suitable locality residing in a very conducive and suitable locality. Though we have so many factors, as I said, when a person sues to a suitable locality is indeed a, a blessing. Imagine the people who are born in the war zone now, in the Russia and Ukraine border. You are there now. Or you are in the Middle East, where there's constant fear, anger, fear to survive. Then what about the Dharma practice? That land where absolutely unrest all the time and fear and anxiety build up every moment. You don't know what will happen the next moment. Those sort of, those sort of conditions is not good for, for our own development. So suitable locality, Patirupa Desavaso, is a blessing. So one should choose uh, wisely where, uh, where one should live because our surrounding our conditions mold our life. You see? If you want to learn about the vihara, the life in the monastery, then you should come and experience here. You can go to the market or you can go to some other places to experience it. If you want to experience the meditation, then you should come to a meditation center. Why? Because environment matters. Environment gives us a, uh, a positive and healthy atmosphere to, to grow the positive things in our life. So if you live among the, among the thieves or among the unwise people, your life will be like that. You see? 
So Patirupa Desavaso is very uh, suitable and one should actually think about it. Where also the climatic conditions also support. Where we have the very adverse and very tough climate, very extreme cold and hot, then how do you do that? Which is also not very good. So in terms of place, you have to consider the people around you, the environment, whether the Buddha Sasana is there or not. Is there any chance to practice? There may be some affluent, very rich countries, rich area, but no Dhamma. You have plenty of everything around you, but no food for the mind. You have everything. Then. Uh, you just live the life like that. Very comfortable life, but no Dhamma. Then our human life remains unexplored. We really don't explore the potentialities of our mind. We remain in a in the physical world. We're happy up to a certain extent, but we don't cultivate, nurture the mind. So the condition, the environment also plays an important role in, in, in Dhamma practice. So for the lay persons also you should choose a right place among the wise people where we can at least protect the sila. You can give dana, you can um, meditate. The last factor also which, uh, which is a very important among all the things what I just explained is Merits, Pubecha Katapunyata, to have the merits from the past lives. Because of goodness in the past, we are here in the present. And the good, being good in the present, will lead you good in the future. Do you understand that? It's very simple. If you are cultivating goodness in the past life, you, are, you have everything here. Good locality, good teachers around you, a good place to live in, and the Dhamma to offer dana and to make merits. But you don't use that in the present life, then you will not get it in the future. So when we understand the, the importance of merits, then we set our life in such a way that we will even grow further, you know. Past merits is good, we, because of past merit we are here with all uh, human happiness, all the bliss of our life. But if you don't use it, then are you growing towards the light, are you going further or you are going downwards? It should be contemplated, one has to know this. We have everything, but these, these are the things which are not permanent. Our life is also not subject to remain for a long time. So when we have everything around us, a wise person should, you know, without wasting any time, put forth effort, put forth effort in making merits, put forth effort in cultivating goodness and fill up his, his heart with goodness. Because Buddha says a punya, the merits, it's just like the another name for happiness. Punya is synonymous to happiness. The more meritorious a person is, the more happy he is. More demeritorious a person is, more miserable he is. This is very simple. So, the cultivation of merits is a, a blessing and that merits will take you to its blessings and that merits will in turn helps us to perfect the paramis. Just like a drop by drop, you know, in your bathrooms, in your washrooms, you put a bucket and let the water drop, top, top, tip, 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 every night. Then in the morning you see your bucket is full. <laughs> Similarly, imagine 
if you collect and accumulate the merits every day, then your life uh, will be, you accumulate a lot of merits in your life. It will fill up with so much of merits. So it is good to practice the sila, good to practice the dhamma, not only every day, but throughout our own life, throughout our whole life. You may say, when, when this dhamma will end? How many years I have to practice like this? Am I going to get some degree, something, a doctorate or something? I'm doctorate of dhamma, I'm PhD in this and that. In fact, Buddha says, no time, it's timeless. Until you become, uh, you are a, you are liberated, you are free. Until you attain aranthood, you have to cultivate dhamma. You have to build up these spiritual qualities within you. Till the life's end, till you become old. Not only for the young ones, for the old ones also, they have to put forth the effort. Because these things will go with you when you pass away. So the in Dhammapada, Buddha says, Sukho yava jara silang. Practice of sila is good, at, good to uphold the sila, perfect the sila until life's end. Sukho sadha patitthita. It is good to have that strong faith until life's end until we pass on. That sort of commitment, conviction must be there. Sukho panyaya patilabho, papanang akaranang sukhang says, it is good to, you know, gain the wisdom through the cultivation of mind. And it is also good not to commit any evil, not to indulge in unwholesome things, the negative factors. So I have summarized till now, until 30 minutes we spent in Dhamma reflections. Half an hour is uh, almost gone. So far we discussed about how to, I told you about the factors to remove the negative tendencies from the mind. And these tendencies will not go simply like that. You have to use your skillful means. You have to reflect upon your own actions. When you say, I want to let go of this negativity, why is so much of Akushala has come to me? Why can't it come to others? Why I have this kind of mind? Why I have this much of suffering? Why I have, I'm facing these problems? Why can't others? But you know, others have the same story. <laughs> Maybe a, a suffering have in different dimensions, in different forms. It's may not be the same. In what physical suffering, Maybe he looks very fit and healthier, but you are not fit and healthier. But you have a good mind. But that person is healthy, but not a good mind, unhealthy mind. Could be different. The suffering can be manifold. You see? So, we have to use our clear understanding into the things as they are and remove those causes for unhappiness, the causes for uh, our problems. You, you let them go and you develop it, the, the wholesome factors which I just now mentioned. Okay, so I think I have to leave at this today uh, because the time is uh, approaching. We have limited time. So please reflect on these Dharma teachings which we just said that factors, there are four factors as I told you to remove the negative causes, akusalas, and the five different skills. Uh, but these are skills actually you have to do it by yourself. It's not like numbering, you number it and you remember it and then you don't do anything. A problem is that we know, we buy at it, but you don't do it. 
<laughs> that's the difference between learning and really putting into practice and realizing and then experiencing. The same wisdom can be divided in different way. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I will leave at this point. We will um, take it off from the next week. May the blessings of Buddha Dhamma Sangha be with you all. May you all grow in blessings and in Dhamma and contemplate and the qualities of Kushalas. Grow those qualities, develop those qualities in your life and remove the tendencies of unwholesome qualities in your life. May the wisdom of Lord Buddha surround your life all the time. May you keep growing on the path of Dhamma and blessings until attainment of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. sadhu. So we, and this is all about uh, the Dhamma teachings and also the blessings of Barabhante uh, be with you all, guide you all on the Dhamma path. We, I think we should um, conclude here before that uh, some announcement is there. I think you know about the, the Dhammapada festival. Uh, from today onwards, this Dhammapada festival is uh, is happening. Today we have programs in Hyderabad, in Mahabodhi Hyderabad Center. All our, our Bhante, Kasabhante, our president, and Abbot Bhante is there. Anand Bhante also went to Hyderabad and all the senior bhantis are doing right now i think the program is going on the consecration of new monks residents in hyderabad and the whole day programs tomorrow we have in mysore in uh, kala student home and uh, day after tomorrow we have in new monastery in lumbini buddha vihara uh, Lumbini Buddha Vihara is uh, another new branch monastery of Mahabodhi. I think some of you may have seen. In Lumbini Vihara, we are we have constructed one uh, very beautiful Bodhi Prakara, the Bodhi Mandapa, with 28 Buddhas. So that Bodhi Prakara we will inaugurate it on 15th of March. <coughs> 